Welcome to the latest episode of the Catalyst Health and Wellness Coaching Podcast. My name is Brad Cooper, and I'll be your host. And today's episode is a nice compliment to the episode we had about two months back with Dr. Halliday. Dr. Halliday took us through the research side of avoiding the food fads, proper nutrition, those kinds of things. Today we have Suzanne Brown with us. She's a registered dietitian nutritionist, a wellness coach, and a health fitness specialist. And what Suzanne's going to do is talk about the practical side, how you can take this and apply it into your life or the lives of your clients on a regular basis. Let me tell you a little bit more about Suzanne. I've known her for years. She holds degrees in human biology and clinical nutrition. And for over 20 years, Suzanne has combined traditional nutritional science with modern approaches to weight management and disease prevention to help her clients. She works with sporting groups, corporations, organizations, the employees for those various organizations, and individual private clients. She's appeared on both television and radio and is a published author. Every day, Suzanne balances her family, work, and her own life by indulging in healthy foods, positive thinking, and daily exercise. She savors every few moment with her husband and two kids by exploring the sunny Colorado mountains where they live, running and hiking with their bouncy dogs, or traveling the world to discover new playgrounds. And you're going to hear that energy. You're going to feel that energy as, as Suzanne is chatting with us today. Just a reminder, you can access additional resources, including a transcript of this episode, at CatalystCoachingInstitute.com. A lot of information on the upcoming Wellness Coach Certification, and it's about two months out at this point. So feel free to reach out to us at results at Catalyst Coaching Institute if you have any questions about that or the retreat this fall. And with that, let's get on with the latest episode of the Catalyst Health and Wellness Coaching Podcast. All right. So Suzanne, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited about this. During during the introduction, I mentioned that this episode today is really going to be focused on the practical side, which the people listen to, that's what they love anyway. They're coaches, they're future coaches. They want to know, how does this actually apply? How do I use this with my clients or in my own life? So real excited to have you sharing some of that. You've been doing this for a long time. You have that unique background where you you combine the, the RD with the wellness coaching. You've been doing that for what, 10 plus years, 20 years in total. Talk us through your journey a little bit. How, how'd you get to where you are today and, and kind of how do you see the two skill sets fit together? Sure. Well, first, thanks again for having me today. I really am excited to talk with you. Um, and I guess you're right. I've been doing, I've been a dietitian for over 20 years and a wellness coach for over 10 years now. Um, and honestly, back in college, um, it started there. I was on, I was on a pre-med track. I thought maybe I'd be a doctor, but I took a basic nutrition course taught by the cross country coach of all people. Um, and I was hooked. I was hooked on nutrition from then on. I was fascinated by food and how it would affect your body, like how it would give me energy or it could make me go into a slump or power me through a run, you know? So that was super exciting to me. Um, as I continued my education again, this was 28 years ago. I soon learned, you know, about other things in the wellness spectrum too. Um, and even 28 years ago, like the food is functional medicine and the wellness movement, they were all starting back then. Mm, yeah. um, and I graduated college, uh, got my registered dietitian, uh, went on for another two years to do that. And then also got a certification from the American College of Sports Medicine because I knew that exercise and activity was a huge part of, again, the wellness movement, you know, things that would fuel our body and, and make us healthy. Um, and since then, really helping my clients be successful meant coaching them on all those aspects of wellness, which is what we do as wellness coaches, you know, not just food, but exercise, sleep, you know, emotions, everything. So I've loved doing both of those things ever since. I, I love the way you kind of contextualize that for us because so many folks and I'm sure I'm stepping on some toes out there somewhere, but so many <laughs> folks get so focused on, well, it's all about exercise. No, no, no. It's all about what you eat. No, 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 no. It's all about what you sleep. No, no, no. It's all, it's like, we're, we're, we're people like it, it. Yes. It's all of those. And we need to, we need to be aware of that. So I, I love the fact you mentioned that. And, and how funny cross country coach. So was the cross country coach, was that her background? Was that her focus? Was that a, like a class that she was doing or was it just something she was no. trying to, help the athletes to get better? No. And actually it was a male cross country coach. It was a guy. Um, and he just pretty much knew about nutrition to help his, his um, athletes. So oh. 
I think that's why too, it kind of took that twist probably in the whole class and it made us all look at our, the foods we were eating in a different way, which as we all know in college, our diets are not the best, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, hello. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's, that's awesome. And I, I, that's probably an encouragement to the coaches too, because you never know. D does that coach know the turn that he created in your life? Oh yes, definitely. We, we, um, I met my husband in college too. And so he was, took the class after me, I think the next year or something. And so we always joked with him about how we went from eating you know, Rice Krispie treats every day to actually including fruits and vegetables and <laughs> <laughs> things like that. And honestly, like we said, really the wellness coaching that I do and the being a dietitian, they just complement each other. Perfect. Like I always tell people it's like, well, obviously I love food and I love to eat, but it's like berries in your oatmeal or it's pears in your walnut spinach salad or something like mm. that, you know, things that like kind of go together because as a dietitian, I have to ask open-ended questions of my clients too, just like we do as wellness coaches. Um, and I'm not here to tell my clients what to do. I'm here to find out like what they need, what they desire, what can help them achieve this outcome that they're looking for. And it's just, I'm lucky that I have that added benefit of my RD, um, that extra education so that yeah. I can, I can lead, they can lead me that way, but I can give them a little bit more of, okay, and then here's some tips of maybe this is how you can include nutrition or stress reduction or life balance or everything, you know, to, in order to make their wellness perfect or as nice. perfect as it would be. There's, is there ever perfect? Maybe not. But. <laughs> right, right. Well, okay. So that's, that's huge for, for a lot of the listeners. They're already wellness coaches and they're trying to decide, well, kind of what's next. And, and maybe the RD is a route some of them want to go. So you set the, you set the tone for that a little bit. How about flipping? <laughs> you touched on this, but how has your, your wellness coaching background and experience helped you in your RD? Cause we also have some RDs listening that are thinking, I don't know, should I go back and become a wellness coach too? Can you give them some insight? The answer is never yes for everybody, but for you in particular, have you seen opportunities where, yeah, that, that experience, that training has made me better as an RD? Oh, sure. Definitely. Like I said, with the other direction too, um, you know, knowing, knowing how nutrition can affect the body and pre prevent disease. Also as a wellness coach, I think that's the added benefit that we can bring to our clients is knowing how, how can we help them maintain life balance? How can we help them reduce their stress? How can, you know, what tools can we help them use to get more exercise in their day? Um, you know, and, and I know that we have all wellness coaches and some dietitians, other people listening, but all those facets of wellness, right? We've heard so many times and, and even people who aren't in our field, they know that you need all those things together in order to be a healthy, well person. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, and when I introduced you, I talked about this is going to be all about the practical side and, and you've already introduced this twice of reminding us folks, yes, nutrition is absolutely key. I spend my <laughs> life focusing on this, but it also sets the tone for these other areas, life balance, stress, exercise, performance, all those kinds of things. So thank right. you for continuing to bring us back to that. That's, that's such an important reminder that I don't think coaches hear often enough. All right. So, so next one, what are some of the misconceptions and there's a million of them, so you might have to limit this to four hours. <laughs> but what are some of the misconceptions about nutrition and weight loss that maybe wellness coaches who are not nutritionists, not registered dietitians, maybe they've heard, they've seen in headlines, popular press is covering it, but they really don't hold up to the evidence-based side of the equation? Well, there's so many, and I, I hate to use that word, but fad diets, right? Mm -hmm. I, I hate the word diet because... It, it, it has such a negative connotation and it shouldn't our word. Again, food should be fun. Should, food should be delicious. Food should be something that's fueling us and making us feel good. But um, that's definitely one thing that clients will bring up. And I think as coaches, we just have to listen to the reasoning why a client might want to do that. Um, without extra background or education, we're not their doctor. You know, we're not going to be able to tell them why it's maybe not good for them. But that is something definitely that I think we need to keep up and be aware of what's happening in the news and that sort of thing. Um, right. Another, I think a big mis misconception about nutrition and weight loss that we, uh, that me as a wellness coach, I've gotten many times and probably other wellness coaches have too, is a lot of clients can't understand why they're not losing weight. Mm -hmm. And whether it's because they're on a diet or whether it's because they think they're exercising enough or 
that they're hardly eating, um, or maybe they think, oh, I'm only eating healthy foods. How am I not losing weight? I think um, in my background as a dietitian, that that's something that I really think as wellness coaches, one way we can kind of lead them is maybe to encourage them to keep a good food record. Um, it's super helpful. Um, again, it's the research goes back to that over and over and over again. No matter what bad diet or way that your client wants to uh, lose weight, actually keeping track of what they're eating is the most helpful thing they can do. Mm. Um, sometimes they're not recalling every little sweet they pick up or every snack or every drink. Um, and as we all know, it's shocking how many drink <laughs> calories add up, especially if there's like soda or coffee drinks with sugar or, or even sometimes smoothies. Yeah. People, you know, smoothies are so popular in the last few years, but if you are making a super high calorie smoothie and then you're not burning off those calories, that's, it's not healthy for you. I also like to encourage clients along this same kind of pathway to kind of measure their food portions, at least for maybe a few days, because unless we've all grown up in a chemistry lab or something, we, you know, it's surprising how, how much a cup is or how little a cup mm -hmm. is to some people. Um, and in some cases along those same lines, some people could be eating too little or they could be eating the wrong ratios of protein, carbs, and fat, which could mm -hmm. be stalling their metabolism, preventing them from losing weight. Um, and again, that's another example of how being a dietitian and a wellness coach really do well, work well together. So, you know, for say, if my client says he's on a very carb restrictive plan, hoping for quick weight loss, because that's super popular, right, sure. for people to do. So with a food record, when I have them keep that, I can see that their intake is low in fiber, probably lacking some critical nutrients that their body needs in order to be healthy. Um, but again, our job as wellness coaches is to help them find what works for them to reach their goals. So if this low carb diet is helping him lose weight and he's decreased his blood pressure and he's off his asthma medicine because of his weight loss, then I'm definitely going to support him. But as a dietitian, I'm also going to teach him what he's, how to include what he's missing, like, you know, monounsaturated fats in avocado versus saturated fats in butter or something of that sort. Okay. You packed a lot in that answer. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. no, 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 no. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. So let, let me spin off question of that. When you, when you okay. have a client that is going down a, a kind of faddish route, I, I like what you said about, okay, I want to make sure that we're meeting their goal because it's their life, not mine. So that was, that was valuable. But you also mentioned very importantly, the key medical aspect, oh, you know, what is happening with their blood pressure, what's happening with their asthma, those kinds of things. So any tips on things that coaches and or RDs could nudge their clients who might be on a little bit of a weird path, but it might be helpful if it's not causing any, any negative. So do you, do you ask them to see their doctor? Do you just say, Hey, you know, have you checked this out? Like, how do you approach that? Just it, it's still keeping to the context that you gave us of it's their life, but also the context of do no harm. And, and you're kind of running the show here too, in terms of the, the nutrient density and those kinds of things. Just any practical suggestions along those lines. Right. Well, I think you're, you're exact on where you say that. I think, especially if they're on a huge, like a very largely restrictive eating plan, they either need to be seeing someone um, like a dietitian or seeing their doctor to know what those major nutrients are that they're missing. Also to kind of keep track of, um, which as wellness coaches, we do usually have access to that, keep track of what their lab work is doing. You know, mm. if they're, if they're doing something that's calorie restrictive but super high in fat and they're not choosing the, the right fats, then their triglycerides and their cholesterol is probably going to go through the roof, and that's bad for their heart. You know, um, If they're super restrictive and they're not getting the vitamins and, and minerals they're going to need, then they're probably going to report to you that they're feeling exhausted all the time or um, you know, uh, that you know, they, they just can't get the exercise in because they don't have the calories for that. So I think exactly what you said it's not really our place to tell them what they can or can't do, right? But we can definitely nudge them and encourage them to make sure they're, they're getting the medical help that they need if they're going in this restrictive path. Okay, good. Really good. Thanks for emphasizing that. Okay, so next question. Our audience is, again, current or future health and wellness coaches. What advice would you have for them if they're working with an individual who they're, they're wanting to improve their nutrition or they're wanting to manage their weight. So kind of the two hot topics in this area, any guidance that would not be running them down a, a fad path 
that you would give right. either for the, the generic, I just want to improve my nutrition. I'm not that super concerned about my weight. I just want to eat better or, or both. I want to <laughs> actually lose weight. So how would you maybe address those two situations differently with some, again, not getting into the weeds, but just some practical advice that the coaches could take away going, oh, okay, I hadn't thought about that before. Right, right. Okay, so definitely managing their weight. I think we, we could go back to the previous question where we talked about the food record, keeping some accurate portion sizes. Um, other things along that line would be finding out what's worked for your client in the past. Mm. You know, maybe you'll get a general answer like, oh, I did Weight Watchers or, oh, I did the keto diet or, oh, I I did, um, you know, a, a high fat plan or something that comes up. I don't know. I don't want to name them all off. Sure. <laughs> but then definitely our job as wellness coaches, which we're all trained to do, is definitely to find out the specifics, you know. Okay, so you said, you know, Weight Watchers was valuable for you. So what are the specifics of Weight Watchers that was valuable for you? Mm. You know, maybe your client was successful when he packed his lunch every day. Or maybe he was successful when he focuses on only eating fast food once a week. Or filling half his plate with vegetables. Or, again, we could put the exercise back in there because we know that, again, like we talked earlier, those, those two are so super entwined. You know, walking 10,000 steps a day or whatever mm -hmm. you can do. Um, and if your client has never had to focus on their weight or nutrition in the past, then this is a great opportunity to help them develop like that long-term healthy relationship with food, not calling it a diet, you know, just calling it what, what kind of healthy changes are you thinking about making? And like we said, there's some we've mentioned before. Um, and as wellness coaches, we've all gone over those increasing their fruit and vegetable intake, just specifics that they can take away and don't bombard them, right? We don't want them right. to say, okay, you need to do 10 things this week. Maybe one, one thing they focus on every week or three things they focus on every month if you're only talking to them once a month or something like that. Um, so I think that's a great thing for people trying to manage their weight. And then for people just to know maybe their weight is, is in a good place and they just want to kind of improve their nutrition there's definitely some of those things along those lines too is you know find out exactly what they want to improve are they trying to decrease the amount of fat that they're eating because they're worried about heart disease maybe in the future are they trying to um, drink more water because they live in the mountains and are dry <laughs> sure. um, are they trying to um, increase their fruits and vegetables because you know they you know they've heard about all the good benefits and um, so so various things like that fruits and vegetables are the hardest one gosh there's like a trillion books out there, right? About how to sneak <laughs> them in your food and eat them a better way. And <laughs> um, but that's definitely something that, gosh, even me, I work on that every day. You know, getting more fruits and vegetables in. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, your uh, your comment earlier about the smoothie. I'm training <laughs> enough. I don't have to be too concerned about the weight side. But the I, same issue. I was like, when I was meeting with my wellness coach that, you, you know, we do a coach the coach program and right. I just said to her, you know what, I'm doing good with the workouts, but I just, I'm not getting the veggies in. I'm great with fruit. Fruit's easy. And she said, you know what, throw it in your, throw it in your smoothie. I'm like, that's disgusting, yeah. but you can't, even, <laughs> you can't even tell, like you don't even know it's there. No. So if no. weight's not a concern that, you know, it's those easy tips that you guys come up with and I'm like, what? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Easy yeah. Enough. And green okay. leafy vegetables, especially spinach, oh my gosh, they're so easy to hide everywhere. Uh -huh. Hide everywhere. And if you cook them down, you've pretty much gotten three servings in a little <laughs> tiny, you know, half a cup serving. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's a good reminder. Um, okay. So I, I, just pulling from your, you know, client, obviously don't share names, but have you seen some situations, some, some clients where nutrition has impacted positively some other area? Like they, they weren't they didn't come to you necessarily for nutritional advice. They came to you for stress or exercise performance or sleep or, you know, financial, whatever. And right. somehow nutrition worked its way in and that seemed to be the catalyst for improvement in these other areas. Any, any just fun stories along those lines? Oh, sure. You know, I have a lot of clients who are very sleep deprived and as you know, anyone who's sleep deprived knows when you're sleep deprived, you don't make the best nutrition choices which can then backfire because <laughs> you're maybe eating a lot more um, unhealthy foods, which mm. are going to maybe keep you up later, or you're balancing that out with more caffeine, which is going to keep you up later. And then that, you know, interacts with your sleep, obviously. Um, also stress. Oh my gosh, when we're stressed, we tend to eat 
to soothe our emotions. It's just a human way of living for most mm -hmm. people. Um, so yeah, definitely food has impacted a lot of my clients. Um, I, I know one person who has just really struggled a lot with anxiety and stress. And um, so we tried to come up with a good eating plan for her that focused on foods that would like mimic the production of serotonin, which is like the happy, you know, happy hormone in the body. So, you know, she had foods that were heavy in like B vitamins and foods that were heavy in magnesium, things like salmon and almonds are, are high in B vitamins and um, things like spinach and oatmeal and um, chickpeas. They're like high in magnesium. So when she focused more of her food, especially during the day when she felt more stressed at night, she was a little better so she could veer off that path. But um, she really just felt better. She didn't find like she was as stressed at work. Um, although she did, I have to add this in too. Again, we go back to our facets of wellness. She did definitely add in some deep breathing exercises when mm -hmm. she really felt her stress like spike. And, you know, again, we just taking, you know, two deep breaths and suddenly we realize how much we're not breathing, right? Mm -hmm. We're like I'm taking shallow breaths all day. So, yeah, so again, that definitely the food helped, but, you know, that we brought another facet of wellness back in there too is the stress release with the uh, breathing. Love it. Good, good stuff. Very good. Okay, so recent developments in nutrition that maybe the audience isn't aware of right now. So just can you hit, a, hit us with a few bullet points that, you know, here, here's some stuff that maybe you hadn't seen, maybe you weren't aware of that your clients might bring up or that you need to have in the back of your mind as you're talking through other things with them. Oh, sure. And, and every single day, right? We have <laughs> oh, well. something new and sensational about nutrition has appeared, right? Um, you know, some of the newest stuff I've seen, actually, you've probably seen it. It came out a few months ago about eating a huge amount of protein at night before you go to bed. And yes. I know a lot of people try not to eat before they go to bed and um, that that's something that they think can improve your muscle quality and your metabolism. So I have a lot of clients who have been trying that in the evening. Um, they're not waking up as super hungry in the morning, which is interesting. It has not worked for other clients. And I think that goes back to, I don't know if we've touched on that, but gosh, one thing that works for one person may not work for another person, which is why it's so important to find out what's worked for people in the past. Um, more, more in the news. The only thing I can really say is, gosh, like every year, every year, like U.S. News and World Report and National Health, they come out with like the best diets. And again, I hate, I don't like that word because it's a negative uh, connotation, but we'll right. use it in that sense, right? And it always goes back to the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, and the flexitarian diet. So if, if people are bringing up, you know, other kind of fad diets, sometimes you can kind of encourage them with these and say, oh, have you seen the, the newest research? That again, the Mediterranean diet, and the DASH diet, and the flexitarian diet, they, they were ranked top for people who actually lost the most amount of weight and maintained that weight loss, which is a huge thing for people. And for people who don't know, the Mediterranean diet it's like fruits, vegetables, olive oil, whole grains, fish. That's like their focus. Um, the DASH diet was created to help people with high blood pressure. And it focuses on like fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, and even low-fat dairy products. And then the flexitarian diet is, is a flexible vegetarian diet. So, again, it's very similar to the other two. It focuses on fruits and vegetables, whole grains, um, and like plant-based proteins. Thank you. I was going to ask you to give us the one sentence description and you, you beat me to it. So well done. Good, good. But it's funny as you described those, had I, and I guess in the transcript, we'll see this, but if we were to look at how you describe each one of them, doggone it, it's about a 92% overlap between them. It's, it's like yes. the basics continue to work, folks. The basics continue to work. So good, good, good. It's exactly okay. true. So, so we always love our audience to get to know you a little bit. So I'm going to turn <laughs> it around a little bit instead of what are your clients doing or what are some cool stories? How about you? And it doesn't have to be nutritional based, but is there some area of your own health and well-being in any category that you're working on, you've been working on that you'd be willing to share, share with us today and, and maybe sh throw out some, these are some of my struggles and here's some of the things <laughs> I've found that have been helpful. Oh, sure. Um, well, you said not nutrition, but I do love food, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and I love cooking. Um, and it's, it's always my focus is I, I sit there and when I'm out for my run, I think about mm, what can I have for lunch today? Or what can I make new for dinner today? So it is definitely my focus. And I love I eat everything. I eat everything from butter to spinach, right? I'm, I eat the whole spectrum. 
and living at 8,000 feet altitude in the mountains, it sometimes cooking things is very frustrating to me. So I'm always playing with my recipes, trying to make them healthy, but I still want them to taste good. Mm. Um, and other times I'm trying to just make them work like birthday cake. Oh my gosh. After a zillion flat sunken cakes, I finally have a recipe for like this dense chocolate cake. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's amazing. <laughs> um, mm. And also, you know, you say also life balance. I mean, I think that is one that probably I share with everyone. Um, I definitely have get stressed when I shouldn't be when I, and then, you know, I definitely have tools that I've used to help me with that. Breathing always works for me. Going out and getting some type of exercise works for me. I take my dogs for a hike or I go for a run or do some yoga or, you know, and I think that's the greatest thing about being a wellness coach that we all have is that we all know that there's so many options out there that we can make work for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, 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 it always will be a struggle. If, like we said before, if we were perfect, that wouldn't be fun, right? We have to always be finding something else to do. Nice. Very nice. Well, thanks for sharing that with us. So last question, this one's wide open. Any final tips, comments? You, you know the audience, you've, you've been the audience for you know, 10 to 20 years, depending on which piece we're focusing on right now. Anything you think of that would be helpful, A, for the person, in fact, let me peel this into two. A, for the okay. person who's thinking about, you know, I kind of like this. I stumbled across this podcast. I, I kind of like this idea of a wellness coach. Any advice for them? And then Part two, any advice for the person who is a wellness coach? They've been doing this for a while, but I don't know, something to keep their fire going or keep their energy or, or their passion or, or their educate, whatever that you would say to someone like you who has been doing this for a while to be able to continue to do a great job going forward. So A, the person that's pondering it on the fence, thinking eh, maybe B, the person, they've been doing this for a year to 15 years things that you would say to them in that situation? I think first for the person on the fence, if it's something that's interested you, oh my gosh, then definitely start taking classes in it or start, you know, listening to more webinars or things about it because not only will you learn so much that will be helpful to yourself, but it is so wonderful and rewarding to help other people. Other people, it really is. I mean, how many times have I had people where it's it's life changing when your health is better. You know, you have when people have more energy and they're able to do something else. It's just really amazing and makes you feel good and like you've um, really helped the world be a better place. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's <laughs> um, tremendous. And then I think also the people who've been wellness coaches. I think the thing for us to remember is, you know, if if we ever get in a rut, that there really is just like there's no one size fits all for exercise or for the way to eat or for you know, the way to lose weight. I think that's the same for the way we coach. Sometimes if we found ourselves in a rut where we're like, oh my gosh, this is the 30th person I've, you know, <laughs> I've made a plan for them to drink more water today or something like, like that. Um, it, that could be the case, but the next person will probably be the person that'll say, no, I'm great with water, but you know what I really could use help on is hiding those vegetables in my food. <laughs> mm. And then there's your new challenge. So there's always going to be a great challenge out there that you know, for me at least, keeps me motivated and keeps me excited about what I do. Fantastic. Fantastic. Suzanne, I really appreciate it. Thanks for jumping on and making this definitely a practical, focused uh, episode for everybody. Great. Well, thanks so much for having me. How's that for practical? She just brought it. So good. By the way, if you want to reach out to Suzanne for any kind of follow-up, she said the best route is her website, which is sb, the rd dot com. Sb like Suzanne Brown, t h e r d like registered dietitian dot com. On the practical side, if you like this kind of thing and you're new to the podcast, go back a few episodes. We have got a great lineup of topics where we hit mindfulness, we hit sleep, we hit mental health in the same type of approach, very, very practical approach to what you can do in those areas. So you may want to take a peek back at that. Also, if you're looking for continuing education, we've had a lot of comments and, and emails about that lately. We've got a new option up there that is approved by the ICHWC. So if you're looking for CEUs, take a peek at that on the website. It's catalystcoachinginstitute.com. And uh, hopefully there's something that, 
that is is appealing to you. And then for the retreat, we've mentioned the retreat a couple of times. The momentum for this thing is just taking off. So if you are leaning that way, don't wait too long. We may trim that date on the early registration simply because it's filling up so fast. So take a peek at that if you'd like. And if you have any questions, anytime on on that stuff or, or anything we talked about today, just anything about your career, whatever, you can always reach out to us. There's results at catalystcoachinginstitute.com. Love to chat with you anytime. Thank you as always for spreading the word. I understand those of you who subscribe are really helping kind of boost it up in the, the way that iTunes does their stuff. So thank you to all of you who have subscribed. Until next time, let's all keep working towards better than yesterday, not just for ourselves, but for our clients. Make it a great rest of the day, and I'll look forward to speaking with you soon on the next episode of the Catalyst Health and Wellness Coaching Podcast. Mm-hmm.